thank you dr kalika for putting a lot of things together uh, for us always including this session uh, am, is my screen visible yes dr kalika thank you uh, now as keratoid refractive surgeons we all fully know that we don't understand ectasia completely and there are various factors that may be at play that don't allow us to accurately predict all cases that will develop ectasia therefore that is really a bugbear for keratoid refractive surgery uh, an adjunct modality that has brought on some excitement about possibly reducing the risk of ectasia is combining cross linking with laser vision correction the extra advantage so i'll be taking you over uh, the experience that we've had with this technique and a, a small literature review of the same now when you do a keratoid refractive surgery you're obviously going to weaken the cornea the mechanisms by which the cornea will weaken is the fact that you're going to be subtracting tissue you may be causing damage to the bowman's membrane and you will be creating vertical and delamination cuts flap creation is one of the strongest causes for biomechanical weakening and the biomechanical weakening is uh maximal in lasik hence the lasik extra procedure was the first to really hit the um um imagination and was popularized by avitro not only the weakening of by the keratoid refractive procedure is at play there are also inherent factors that we've already discussed in the first two talks that predispose a patient to developing ectasia these include a high correction thin corneas abnormal topography history of eye rubbing pregnancy and hormonal imbalances and certain other risk factors so we've long been using cross linking to treat ectasia in the form of stopping progression for keratoconus when we have the opportunity to treat even post lasik ectasia with this is it possible to shift from treating to preventing by using cross linking that is what that is the question that extra bases itself on so we have seen that by cross linking the cornea you're not only going to be reducing the risk of corneal ectasia but also the risk of refractive regression by minimizing the stromal bounce back and also the epithelial regression so you are going to get stable corneas and stable refractive uh, outcomes post refractive surgery nothing comes without a downside cross linking has safety concerns in the fact that we know that cross linking causes some amount of haze and scatter and if you cross link with refractive surgery you are bound to also risk the uh, complication of haze also we have seen that cross linking flattens the cornea and if this progressive flattening continues the refractive outcome may be compromised by a shift towards hyperopia so what is a compromise that we look at though lasik extra was started as a uh, treatment uh, popularized by avitro for all patients it is at present restricted to those who we feel are at, are at higher risk for ectasia this includes younger patients higher myopic correction hyperopia is a um, indication because the amount of regression that happens after hyperopia is more borderline topography here i like to have a disclaimer that though some people have used the technology of extra to treat from first and uh, patients who have subclinical keratoconus we at our practice would want to stay away from keratoconus refractive procedures in such a topography that has evidence of from first keratoconus and these are only the borderline cases which are a little iffy to go or not to go that we treat with extra a family history of keratoconus persistent eye rubbers etc truck can also be treated with this modality this is a nomogram uh, given by dr sheetal barar at all from netadama where they have listed the risk factors including young age high correction residual stromal bed thickness being reduced or uh, topographic or biomechanical indices which make you wary and the presence of two or more risk factors would make this patient a candidate for the extra procedure the extra procedure or like cross thinking utilizes two components the riboflavin and the uva radiation note that when we uh, the lasik extra came in uh, it was important to note that uh, dextran causes dlk so we shift to dyes which don't have dextran the dye used it could be saline based and is embedded right into the stromal bed kept there for about 90 seconds and then washed the stromal uh, the flap is then reposited 
the energy that we use is roughly about half the energy that is used in conventional cross thinking. The reason for that is we feel that using half the energy will minimize the risk of haze and that the fact that you don't need full energy because you're just trying to give back the biomechanical strength that the procedure has weakened. And this is not inherently as diseased a cornea as would be there in keratoconus. So this is the energy of 2.7 joules per square centimeter, half of the 5.4 that we use in the routine treatment of patients with keratoconus. Why don't we cross things through the flap? We don't want to remove the epithelium. We have an interface where we have access to directly embedding the dye into the stroma. And uh, this helps you cross think without cross thinking through the flap and uh, do away with the uh, possible complications of flap shrinkage. Now, post-classic uh, results with the extra procedures have been quite heartening. There have not been any significant reports of haze and the refractive results have been quite stable and predictable. So the extra procedure is giving you the advantage of biomechanical strengthening without any significant side effects of haze or needing to develop a new normogram for the refractive correction. Do note that there have been case reports of ectasia even after LASIK extra when done in cases who have an obvious uh, keratoconic map. So do stay away from keratoconus. Use it for only borderline cases. This again has shown that you can follow these patients for years and the stability that they maintain, particularly in hyperobic uh, LASIK is remarkable. This is the finite element modeling. What this basically does is try to reconstruct the cornea post the extra procedure. And it has shown that the LASIK extra corneas are stronger. So if you're uh, exposing them to higher IOP, they're less likely to deform, basically meaning they're stiffer, less likely to become ectatic, but the refractive outcome has not changed. So you now have a technique where you can easily add on without really worrying about the refractive outcomes and giving you the peace of mind that you have lowered, if not eliminated, the risk for ectasia. Now, coming to the flip side, like we don't understand ectasia fully, we still don't understand the perfect protocol call or the perfect patient for extra. So you'll see a wide range of protocols being used. The amount of energy that has been used has varied from 0 0.8 to full 5.4, most commonly hovering around the 2.7 mark. So uh, depending on the machine you have, you can use power and time settings to deliver this energy. And most results have been rather gratifying. Though if you see the number of eyes in each of these series are limited to less than 100. And this is basically a combination of various experiences that is making us believe that this technique works. Uh, PRK extra is something that I think has become more popular than LASIK extra. Because if you are dealing with a patient who is more likely to develop ectasia, you don't want to make that patient undergo a flap, which causes the greatest amount of biomechanical weakening. So PRK extra is reserved for patients who have borderline topo or thickness uh, and patients who sometimes need retreatments and may have a lesser residual stromal bed. We uh, deb debride the epithelium. The soak time can vary from 15 minutes to 90 seconds, depending on the riboflavin that you use. And like I said, the energy that you use is about half. Here, we normally use 9 milliwatts for 7.5 minutes. You can use 18 uh, milliwatts for 3 minutes or 30 for 90 seconds. But this is an energy setting that we are comfortable with. You see here, uh, like Raghav has discussed, this is again a borderline topography with a D map, which is in yellow and is a young patient. So is a good candidate for taking up for PRK extra. The flip side of PRK extra, like that of PRK, is the risk of haze. Though most reports have shown it to be safe, uh, there are reports of persistent haze, which has been noted in three to four case reports. The haze usually resolves within one to three months, but may require longer duration of steroids. We routinely use mitomycin C in PRK extra cases, but uh, the study out of I Foundation at Coimbatore showed that they had no uh, haze despite, despite not using mitomycin C. The, the uh, hypothesis shared by them was that Cross-thinking itself causes keratocyte apoptosis. And since you don't have these activated keratocytes, your risk of haze is less. But we routinely have found no problem using MMC and do so in our practice with PRK extra. The procedure really of our choice, which blends in the advantage of no pain and biomechanical strength, not as weak as LASIK in all possibilities, is SMILE. 
smile is performed in cases and uh, where you, uh, where you have a higher refractive error with stabler outcomes unlike prk we use 0.25% riboflavin with saline and we push it into the interface uh, give it about a 90 second uh, time to soak and then wash it with bss and then the uv light is applied again for half the energy setting of 2.7 joules per square centimeter just taking you over this procedure we all know smile is uh, performed with a femtosecond laser this is a visumax with um, the patient interface latching onto the cornea the posterior pass forming the lenticule refractive cut and the anterior pass giving you the uh, cap the side cut which gives you access to the lenticule now the dissection is performed and once you know the planes you are able to free up the lenticule and remove the lenticule what you have here is you've created an interface and the side cut here because being lesser than lasik possibly gives you lesser biomechanical weakening now we take this patient under the microscope and uh, instill riboflavin i would like to point out that do respect the interface and you don't want anything other than riboflavin even small uh, fibers entering into the interface must ensure that the interface remains clear post the wash once this has happened you just subject this patient to cross thinking as you would routinely do with the altered energy settings our experience and that of many others has been rather heartening with uh, smile extra in fact there has been a case series published with form thrust cases taken up for uh, for smile extra which have not progressed over months however again i like to add the disclaimer that you do this at your own risk and classically reserve this for borderline topography is not frank case um So all in all, I like to conclude that area remains the bugbear for keratorefractive surgery, and there is a ray of hope that cross thinking with the extra procedure offers. The flip side is that this is still not randomized and standardized to the extent that we want it, and the energy settings vary widely. Uh, our recommendation would be to use half the energy settings without any alteration in the refractive normogram. be wary of uh, haze post prk extra and we would recommend use of mmc and in most cases if young borderline corneas with high refractive errors you'll have gratifying results thank you for your attention